welcome to Root Causes, the PKI and Security Podcast, where a pair of industry veterans talk about all matters digital certificates and PKI. I'm Tim Callen, Chief Experience Officer at Sigtigo, and I'm here with Jason Sirocco, SVP of Product at Sigtigo. How are you doing today, Jason? Doing great, Tim. Thanks for having me. So, Jason, you and I on this podcast talk a lot about certificate automation. And in fact, I'd have to double check this, but I think we mentioned it in our very first episode. So I think it goes back to the very beginning, but if not, really close to that. And we also more recently have talking, t- been talking a lot about certificate lifecycle management, CLM. Um, and CLM, of course, is an industry term that has really kind of come into common use during the tenure of this podcast. In the early days, people weren't saying CLM, and now they are, and we've adopted that term as the industry has adopted that term. So in all that discussion, it may seem to the listener as if these two terms are more or less interchangeable. But they're not interchangeable, are they, Jay? Yeah, they're not the same at all, Tim. They are, I would say that the best way to to really explain this is that automation it comes down to a subset of CLM pillars. Where, whereas, yeah, yeah, if you take a look at the pillars overall, right, visibility being the horizontal capability of certificate lifecycle management. If you don't have visibility to your certs, you don't have CLM. And you have uh, the important input to visibility, one of the pillars of CLM, which is discovery. Discovery is without it, you don't really have CLM. But neither of those things is automation, right? Automation comes in whenever you're talking about provisioning, moving the cert around, um, re- you know, renewal. Uh, those are the kinds of when we're talking about certificate lifecycle management, those are pillars of certificate lifecycle management, but but they include they can potentially include automation. That's where automation actually fits. Automated, yeah, automated uh, installation of your certs by way of example, automated renewal of your certs by way of example. Those are clearly cases where automation is is vastly important. But at the same time, at the same time, You know, there are plenty of people who are in a hybrid environment where, let's say, most of my TLS certs can be installed automatically if using Acme, but some can't. And so I'm automating 90% of it and I'm dealing with the other 10% the old-fashioned way. Okay, so provisioning (laughs) is not fully automated, but it's mostly automated by your CLM. And the ones that aren't automated, you still have visibility. You can see what they are. You can see where they're due. You can get a warning or an alert if you're coming down to near the last day and you know you, you, you have to deal with it. So the, the, the capabilities of CLM that are valuable can extend beyond simply automating these things. And I think that, that is exactly point, right, right, Tim. So let's name off the pillars, right? There's the horizontal pillar of visibility, sure. deployment, discovery, mm-hmm. and then there's the, the third, revoke and replace, and then, of course, renew. And I would say renew. automation fits on three of those, deployment, revoke and replace, sure. and mm-hmm. renew. Those three yep. pillars are where Absolutely automation renew. is yeah. possible. Uh, it, it's not necessary, but it is possible. And the reason... And greatly valuable and widely I would used. have to say, Tim, yeah. the re- what is yeah. the reason for this podcast? And, and I have to answer, it's it's mostly this. It has to do with the fact that the, the Google 90-day maximum certificate life cycles, mm-hmm. I, I would have to say that it, it basically means that if you had nothing else, you need to have automation on the deployment, revoke and replace, and the renewal. Because otherwise, you know, yeah. every quarter... Or, or less, probably less, you're going to have to be doing these kinds of activities. And so, so therefore, uh, automation, to be able to make those, those activities, those costly and risky activities go away in terms of it being a risky problem and not have you know, your site go down because of an expired certificate and have the risk of that outage every 90 days or less uh i it's very important to note yeah. that when you're when you sure. when we are talking about clm and you and you you say geez i think i need certificate lifecycle management and you, you might have another person across the table from you saying well i don't need clm what i really need is automation well the thing is you need both and the way to think about clm is that the yeah. important three out of the five important aspects of clm can and should be automated too. And, and I think the two feed each other, right? So CLM 
enables automation, first of all, just because it's a platform that can do it for you, but also like you talked about visibility. Visibility is very important to automation. You've got to learn what you have. You discover your certificates, you bring them into the platform, and now you're able to automate their renewal, right? Without knowing what they are, you can't automate their renewal. So CLM enables automation and vice versa is also the case. And you made a very compelling argument for this, that these pillars, without automation, the value of these pillars go down vastly. Right. And and visibility, that that capstone that sits on the top of the four pillars is very much enabled by automation. If I have certificates that are in the automation cycle and they run through automatically, one of the things that happens is they show up in your reports. They show up in your dashboards. Right. So visibility itself also depends on automation. And so the two really are very synergistic. Right. They, they each make the other stronger when they work together in kind of an integrated platform. So let me argue that it, it's really useful to talk about this in a really real world way because we've broken it down now so far in in the most, right. you know, the, the industry speak about what these pieces of certificate life cycle management and automation actually are. We've, we've defined the difference, but I think what might be helpful to really Get down into the weeds here. Let's say that uh, you know you have shadow mm-hmm. IT in your organization, which has gone out. It, right. We all it's As just all it's a fact of life, and they've uh, you know acquired certificates from a commercial vendor, and then you also had some experimentation going on uh, with uh, another vendor. Could be uh, one of the free vendors, you know, Zero SSL, you know, Let's Encrypt, one of those, and you really really because of that risk might not know all the different certificates that you're using hence the need for discovery and and unless you discovery is what feeds Mm -hmm. visibility and unless you have those things you won't be able to know whether how can you keep track of your unmanaged certificates those let's encrypt certificates even though they are perhaps they are automated through acme protocol which is a great thing to do, your visibility to them, your ability to discover them doesn't come from Let's Encrypt. It comes from certificate lifecycle management, which is something that Let's Encrypt does not provide. Right. And and CLM helps you in that in other ways. For instance, it's giving you a single pane of glass, right? If you got Acme, you're only dealing with the certs that are deployed through Acme, right? With a CLM, you can think about all of them. If you are automating through Acme, are you necessarily getting the good visibility and views and reports that you need to really understand what's going on? Well, you can, but you got to write those yourself, right? And so all of these things are are enabled by a properly featured CLM. Tim, platform. I would make the argument that e- even though we quite obviously are, are employed by a certificate authority, we. I've been saying, you've been saying for a very long time, CA agnostic CLM is important. And in fact, we know it's, remember back in the day, Tim, when Microsoft used to rail against Linux and it it almost seems like, you know, that was a a different age, but Mm -hmm. I remember that, that time very clearly Mm -hmm. and Microsoft clearly lost that argument and now has swung in completely the opposite direction. I I think that, you know, us, who have been in the CA world for a very long time, I'll always recognize the fact that it was very natural for within a, an organization, even of a medium size, it was fairly natural to have certificates from multiple CAs for various legitimate purposes. And in fact, being able to dual source from, from multiple CAs is probably not a bad practice anyway, right? In, in all honesty. And so therefore, it just highlights the absolute importance of certificate lifecycle management as a whole, those pillars and the visibility, which allows you to see everything, is covering what is the natural order of things within the IT world and in and, and how web servers work and how the, the web overall is structured. It, it's very natural to have certificates, certificates from a lot of different places, and, and you should be able to have visibility to all of it, regardless of how you paid for it, or, you know, what the branding was. Uh, or any of the other things that are important to you about those publicly trusted certificates. Uh, I would I would say, though, that because of the, the Google 90-day announcement that happened recently, that importance of automation, mm-hmm. that yeah. word is just coming up more and more and more. And I, I, oh, yeah. I think this podcast was really all about they are 
very inclusive words to each other, certificate lifecycle management and automation. We just wanted to put a very fine point on where automation sure. fit. And Tim, you did a good job of explaining how, how they really do come together as, as a you. whole. And, and Jay, may I also take one more interesting angle on this? So you started in the beginning, you said that you feel that auto, CLM is a superset of automation. And I, I think that is mostly true, but I do, I do imagine that there are examples where automating our business processes is essential to our crypto and our PKI and our certificates that falls outside of the traditional boundaries of CLM. And this might be things like uh, ordering certificates, attributing costs to cost centers, um, uh, uh, certain things you may do in the DevOps world that are, that are certainly enabled by your CLM but are really operating inside that DevOps environment. Uh, domain control validation which is going to go down to 90 days and it's going to be incredibly important that that gets done every 90 days or your certs won't work. And now at that point, you really kind of want that to be automatic. And maybe some of these things you could argue, well, what, what are the exact boundaries of the CLM? And if uh, a, a sufficiently featured CLM might include all these things, sure. But, you know, it, it, it does reach its tendrils into all kinds of other parts of the organization because certificates are just so foundational and ubiquitous and as such you start to imagine and especially as we get down to the 90 day certs that uh, other parts of your operation probably would very profitably stand to be automated as well or that's going to become the bottleneck and that's going to become the point of pain and that's going to become the source of error tim uh we didn't plan talking about this ahead of time i promised the audience but uh we we have planned on having another podcast about a new pillar for CLM, and yeah, and in fact, and in fact, list. that pillar has to do a lot with what you just said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good topic. I want to get to that. I, I do agree with you on that, um, for for sure. Uh, but you know, I just I think you got to think about how all of these other aspects of your business now are going to be you know, the pressure is going to be on them. And what am I going to do to make sure that runs error free and without sucking up all of my human capital as well? I don't think uh, uh, somebody who's in the business of IT at this very moment uh, could feel that they could function well without automation of a lot of processes in IT, which back mm -hmm. in the day when, when I knew a lot of, you know, IT folks and on the ground, they didn't have these kinds of automated functions. And the yeah. world was very so, different. Hey, Jason, yeah. Yeah, real quick, you, you mentioned a couple times, I just want to reference for the audience, you talked about the four pillars of automation. Go back to our episode number 143. So 143 was where you and I defined the model of the four pillars of certificate automation. And like I said in the beginning, at the time, we weren't even saying CLM. That episode is not called the four pillars of CLM. It's called the four pillars of certificate automation because that was prior to the real common parlance of that term. Um, go back and give that a listen because that explains the viewpoint on all four of those pillars and they haven't really changed. And that's, I think, a good bit of prep work for the future podcast you and I, like, like we said, like you said, are intending to record where we will introduce a fifth pillar that's worth considering. So I just wanted to reference that. For yeah, people. you got it. And, and that, that, that episode that's upcoming really is directed at UIT folks who have a lot of processes automated already. And you want to know yeah. how certificate lifecycle management itself can automate, help and be part of that automation ecosystem that we know that you've worked really hard on. And it's going to be cool. a, a very interesting discussion, Tim, about how, you know, automation is a bigger topic even than just this, which is, which is what really you were just trying to point out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So more to come. This is a rich topic. I don't think we've remotely explored it. I think this is one of the ones we're going to have to keep returning to and returning to as we not only establish a baseline and then build on top of that, but also as you and I figure out the implications. And I think we're going to come back and discuss more things that maybe today we haven't even really thought through all the way. You got it, Tim. All right. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. This has been Rick Causes. 